Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is July 11th, 2018. Now for this segment, I am going to provide for you an overview of the present U.S. drought situation in the context of recent heat waves and in the larger context of human-caused climate change. Presently, the U.S. is seeing about 25% of its land mass for the continental United States affected by drought and a bit more affected by drier than normal conditions. Presently, the drought situation is concentrated in the U.S. Southwest, particularly in the states of Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona, with worst or highest levels of uh, drought experience, exceptional drought in the four corners region of these four states. We also have significant drought in portions of Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas, as well as notable drought in the states of Nevada, California, Oregon, and Washington. Milder drought extends through parts of the Mississippi River Valley, and a recent emergence of drought has occurred in the U.S. Northeast. Now, compared to recent years, the drought situation is not as bad as it has been, particularly for California, which during 2013, 2014, 2015 and parts of 2016 experienced some of the worst drought conditions in its record, but it's notable that mountain glacier reserves are, uh, mountain snow reserves are low, and in many locations, water reserves are still low for the state. Now, looking ahead, over the next couple of weeks, we expect to see quite a bit of heat in the U.S. And I'm going to go ahead and run this run this model back and run it for you while I'm discussing. So the southern, central, and western U.S. is expected to experience abnormally warm temperatures throughout the next 10-day period according to the GFS model and some of these temperatures are expected to exceed the upper 90s to lower 100s and in potentially into the 105 to 110 or even 150 15 degree range for the U.S. Southwest. Notably the U.S. Central, uh, the California Central Valley is expected to experience significantly above normal temperatures. And above normal temperatures enhance drought by increasing the rate of evaporation from soils. So if above normal temperatures are coincide with even moderately precipitation free conditions, then drought can assert more rapidly. Now, And, and toward the latter portion of this period, some of the models are showing some rather extreme potential warming by mid-July, approximately July 20th, for the Southwest again. And we'll have to keep an eye on this to see if the, the recent severe heat wave that occurred in the Southwest is repeated. Of course, this is a long range forecast, so you can take the predictions in this model with, with a bit of a grain of salt, but it's something that we'd like to keep an eye on. Now, I would like to talk to about some long term trends. Now, over the past 30 days, the Western US, particularly California, Nevada, and Utah, have seen much lower than normal pre precipitation and much of the U.S. has experienced above normal temperatures. And during the past 90 days, 
We see broad ranging drier than normal conditions over much of the southwest and into the central U.S. with above normal temperatures again dominating. Now according to NOAA's seasonal outlook, precipitation is actually expected to be above normal over drought regions over the next 90 day period. So if we get some monsoonal moisture flow coming in here, that can help to abate drought conditions currently where they are worse. And apparently warmer than normal temperatures are expected to sweep, as expected to sweep up into the Pacific Northwest, particularly Washington and Oregon. And this could enhance drought conditions in that region. And in addition, the NOAA Climate Prediction uh, Center is predicting below normal precipitation for parts of the Texas and Louisiana Gulf Coast. Now these are long range forecasts, so they can have a uh, potential for, um, for high errors. So, so this is something to keep in mind, but it's not set in stone. Now it's also worth noting that drought is an enabler, an, an enabler for wildfires. And we've, we've seen a rather intense fire season this year. I'm going to talk about that a bit more in a later post, but so far this year, it does appear that, that this season is not quite as intense as last season, which is some good news. Now, thank you for joining me, and I'll look forward to chatting with you again.